Dear student teachers, welcome back to the knowledge and curriculum course. We are in the third unit curriculum development in education and in the fourth module where we are going to discuss about models of curriculum development. This is Dr. V. Girija, Professor and Head School of Education, Bayes Institute of Science, Technology and Advanced Studies. Let us move on to know how to construct or design a curriculum. We know that the curriculum is the totality of experiences planned by a school or an organization to reach the set goals. Then how to plan these experiences or how to construct a design curriculum? Who all should be involved in the process of curriculum construction is a significant question. Normally, in our setup, the curriculum framing committee consists of experts in curriculum construction, educationists, professors in university departments, but least representation is given for teachers in this process. But the most important person in the curriculum development and implementation process is the teacher. Better teachers support better learning because they are most knowledgeable about the practice of teaching and are responsible for introducing the curriculum in the classroom. They have the first-hand knowledge of the situation and only they, they can judge the validity of experiences planned for students. Hence, let us discuss how to construct a curriculum. The process of curriculum development is a crucial, responsible and meticulous job. In this process, the designers have to follow a systematic process based on the model that they would like to adopt. Let us understand the development of curriculum construction by studying one of the most popular models in the field of curriculum development suggested by Hilda Taba. Before which, we shall look into the principles of curriculum construction. Principle of center, child centeredness. As suggested by NCF National Curriculum Framework 2005, we have accepted constructivism as the basic philosophy of education and child centered pedagogy is our focus. Hence, our curriculum should consider the needs, interests, abilities, aptitude, age level, and circumstances of the child as prime factors at every stage of curriculum. In fact, the curriculum is meant to bring about the development of the child in the desired direction so that he is able to adjust well in life. Principle of Community Centeredness Though the curriculum centers around the word child, it is important to note that child has to grow as a responsible member of the community in which he or she lives. Therefore, their social behavior is also has to be suitably developed. Both the individual development and the social development of the child deserve equal attention. He is to live in and for the society. Therefore, his needs and desires must be in conformity with the needs and desires of the society in which he is to live. The values, attitudes and skills that are prevailing in the community must be reflected in the curriculum. However, the society is not static, it is dynamic. Its needs and requirements are changing with the rapid developments taking place in all fields. While working for the de development, this factor cannot be ignored. Principle of Activity Centeredness Constructivism demands the child to be active. Only when the child is active in a learning situation, it is possible to construct knowledge for him or her. The curriculum should center around the multifarious activities of people. It should provide well-selected activities according to the general interests and developmental stages of children. It should provide constructive, creative and project activities. For small children, play activities should also be suggested. The purposeful activities both in the classroom and outside the classroom should be provided. It is through a network of activities that the desired experiences can be provided and consequently desirable behavioral changes can be brought about in children. Principle of variety. Some philosophers go to the extent of suggesting curriculum at individual level. This is not practical, but different activities suitable for different children to learn the same content can be planned. This variety will compensate the loss. The curriculum should be broad based so as to accommodate the needs of varied categories of peoples so that they are able to take up subjects and participate in activities according to their capacities and interests. The needs of peoples also change from place to place. For example, the peoples in rural areas, urban areas and hilly areas will have different needs. 
the needs of boys and girls are also different. So these considerations should be reflected in the curriculum. Principle of coordination and integration. Interdisciplinary learning is the trend of the day. Experts in the field of academic disciplines feel that categorizing each subject under, wat under watertight compartments is not natural since knowledge does not exist in bits. At the school level, at least attempts must be made to integrate the experiences in different subjects through activities and they must be integrated. Various subjects and activities have to serve the same ultimate purpose, the achievement of the aims of education. Principles of Conservation The main aim of education is to allow the students to consume, transmit and enrich their culture. This is essential for human progress. Culture consists of traditions, customs, attitudes, skills, conduct, values and knowledge. The curriculum framers must make scope for each of these components related to culture education. Principle of forward looking. Education is not only for present but also for future life of peoples. Curriculum designers should be able to foresee the need of future society and societal demands and prepare students in this direction. The curriculum should also include knowledge, skills, experiences, influences, etc., which will develop in the child's abilities and power to make effective adjustments in the later life. Principle of flexibility. In our age, rapid developments are taking place in various fields. Consequently, the field of society are hanging. The content of curriculum cannot be the same for all times to come. It should not be static. It must be dynamic and change with the changing times. It should reflect the latest trends in the field of education and psychology. Principle of balance. The curriculum must maintain a balance between subjects and activities, between the direct and indirect experiences, between academic and vocational education, between compulsory and optional subjects, between formal and informal education, between individual and social aims of education, etc. There should be a perfect balance between um, all these things when the curriculum is being constructed. Let us look into the principle of utility during the curriculum construction stage. The principle knowledge for knowledge sake is not accepted today. Whatever is learned should be useful. Therefore, every learning experience should help the individual to gain something either related to further learning or for his personal life. And those experiences which are useful have more scope today than those which are earned as part of knowledge accumulation. Therefore, curriculum makers should ensure the utility of each experience provided through curriculum. Now, on understanding the principles of curriculum development, let us move on to the uh, model of uh, Hilda Taba model of curriculum development. According to Hilda Taba, the steps of curriculum construction are as follows. The first step is to diagnose the need of the students. Then we will have to formulate the objectives. Then uh, selecting the content suitably. The fourth stage is organizing the content. The fifth stage is selecting uh, the learning experiences. Six, uh, then sixth stage is organizing the learning experiences. And the seventh stage is evaluation. When we look into the diagnosing the needs, before planning curriculum, diagnosis of needs is very important. This helps in general analysis of problems, conditions and difficulties. The purpose is here is to generate new ideas about the curriculum by knowing thoroughly from various sources such as students' cumulative records, teacher recordings, parents' interviews, children's cases and their IQ achievement, this kind of analysis would lead to uh, come out with a new concept of uh, conception of curriculum. Diagnosis leads to understand the prime needs at different stages of curriculum. Formulating specific objectives. The objectives need to be comprehensive in relation to the following. The concepts or ideas to be learned, attitudes, sensitivities and feelings to be developed, ways of thinking to be reinforced, strengthened or initiated and habits and skills to be mastered. Selecting the content. The objectives and needs provide a basic idea and guidance to select relevant content. While selecting content, the following points have to be followed meticulously. Selecting the topic, selecting the basic ideas and selecting the specific content. 
The first task is to select the relevant topics through which the objectives formulated can be achieved unit by unit. The topics have to be finalized. The different topics which can be covered under each subject, class and level should be decided. Then attention has to be paid to incorporate these into broader, broad content structure. Selecting and organizing learning experiences. With the content ready, it is easy to plan for learning experiences and activities. The criteria with which the content is drawn should provide plan, visualize what students need to experience in order to acquire certain behavioral competencies and sequence of the experiences. Care must be taken to include a variety of learning experiences like reading, writing, observing, analyzing, discussing, tabulating, painting, etc. And then the next stage in the curriculum development in the Hella Taba model is evaluating. Evaluation is determining the objectives, diagnosis or establishment of baseline for learning and appraising progress and changes. There are varied approaches and methods of evaluation to know the progress of the child. Evaluation in, is in a way continuous diagnosis along with comparison of results. Even several informal devices can also be used to evaluate the outcomes of the curriculum on the whole. Finally, whether the objectives of the curriculum are achieved needs to be evaluated. Checking for balance and sequence. After completing unit by unit on the whole curriculum, it is necessary to check the overall consistency among its parts or individual aspects. Every aspect needs to be checked like whether the core ideas are reflected in the content, whether the overall achievement of objectives is planned for the overall progress of the topic. The fundamental purpose of curriculum development is to ensure that students receive integrated, coherent learning experiences that contribute towards their personal, academic and professional learning and development. Hilda Taba's Definition on Curriculum The Hilda Taba defines curriculum as a document containing a statement of the aims and of the specific objectives. It indicates some selection and organization of content and it either implies or manifests certain patterns of learning and teaching. Because the objective demand or the content organization requires it, includes a program of evaluation of the outcomes. Let us look into the strengths of using the Hilda Taba model. This model taps into higher order thinking skills. This model builds comprehension skills such as inference, synthesizing and summarizing. This model, in this model, gifted learners will thrive with the opportunities to explore questions with multiple correct answers. Questioning here is open-ended and no clear right or wrong response is advocated. When grouped together, students work collaboratively with others to build a speaking and listening skills. Provides This model provides an opportunity for healthy classroom discussions before and after generalizations are made. Of course, Hilda Taba model also has some certain limitations and we shall look into the limitations of uh, using Hilda Taba model. It can be difficult for some students to handle the open-ended aspect of the model. Without clear direction, it may be difficult for teachers to plan and prepare questions for the path of the student to take. Difficult to adapt for all subjects or at least for some types of text. Text must be chosen in advance. On going through the Hilter Tobas model, the next model, the Taylor's model, has to be looked into in while um, looking into the curriculum development. It is considered the Taylor's model is considered as one of the best models. He has published basic principles of curriculum and instruction in the year 1949 in which he discussed the rationale of, for examining the problems of curriculum inquiry and the, for, the following needs are to be identified. The first thing is purposes of school. The second thing is educational experiences that are related to these purposes. The third one, organization of all these experiences and the fourth part is evaluation of the purposes. Here in this model, purpose is connoted to objectives and curriculum planners should identify the general objectives from three broad sources that is subject matter, learner and society. The next model 
is Stuffle Beam's context input process product model. Stuffle Beam model provides a means for generating data relating to four stages of program operation context evaluation, which continuously assesses needs and problems in the context to help decision makers determine goals and objectives. Input evaluation, which assesses alternative means for achieving those goals to help decision makers choose optimal means process evaluation which monitors the processes both to ensure that the mean are actually being implemented and to make necessary modifications and product evaluation which compare actual ends with intended ends and leads to a series of recycling decisions and the kinds of decisions are identified. The four stages of specific steps are identified. The kinds of data needed to make those decisions are those data are collected. The criteria for determining quality are identified. The data are analyzed on the basis of these criteria and the needed information is provided to decision makers. So the context input process model that is CIPP model as it has come to be called as several attractive features for those interested in curriculum evaluation. Now we'll move on to look into the activity-centered curriculum. UA used expression the expression activity program as early as 1897 in a session with parents and teachers at its laboratory school in Chicago, USA. The activity-based curriculum or activity-oriented curriculum is also termed project curriculum or an experience curriculum. But the name activity is a fundamental conception. A curriculum material translated in terms of activity is what we call an activity curriculum. The subject matter is thought through activities. In simpler words, activity-based learning is learning by doing. It is a process of learning by performing certain activities. It is highly effective as instead of asking kids to sit, listen and take notes, this mode of learning allows them to participate in their own learning experience via practical activities such as independent investigation or problem solving. The activity-based curriculum design is structured around the following concepts. Experimentation, that is learning from experience. The second one is exploration, collecting knowledge and developing skills through active surveys and expression, encouraging children to express their views via visual presentations. Why activity-based learning is advocated? Activity-based learning motivates encouraging kids to enjoy the learning experience. Activity-based learning has many benefits including uh, it helps students to retain information and activity-based curriculum encourages children to participate physically and mentally in the learning process and helps students learn and retain information. This learning process allows children to remember and understand learning materials based on their personal experiences. This, it, this also encourages children to become more self-reliant and inquisitive learners. Let us move on to interdisciplinary curriculum. Relating to more than one branch of knowledge is interdisciplinary curriculum or involving two or more academic, scientific or artistic disciplines. This type of curriculum allows the student to learn by making connections between ideas and concepts across different disciplinary boundaries. Students learning in this way are able to apply the knowledge gained in one discipline to another different discipline as a way to deepen the learning experience. The most effective approach to interdisciplinary study enables students to build their own interdisciplinary pathway by choosing courses which make sense to them. For example, it is not too difficult to find a theme which crosses over disciplinary boundaries in literature, art and history or science and mathematics. The goals of interdisciplinary curriculum. It allows the interdisciplinary color, uh, this curriculum allows students to expand their areas of knowledge and apply different disciplines in their careers. Allows students to choose courses that are of their interest and helpful for the stages of personal and professional development. Allow students to have broader perspective and to be more adaptable in an ever-changing world. Examples of interdisciplinary curriculum are geography, like um, art, create a map of a country.